Hello everyone, welcome to the 225 Q&A practice. Today we're going to move forward with the continuance of the testimony of Denise Brown Simpson, which is uh, Nicole Brown Simpson's sister, uh, OJ uh, Simpson's uh, wife's sister. So we're going to take the testimony of her and continue on with that. So it will be plaintiff attorney, ready? That is what the defendant said. He wanted her out of his house and he continued going up and down the stairs and he grabbed the clothes out of her closet and started throwing them down onto the foyer where we were down on the bottom and he came back down and grabbed Nicole. He threw her up against the wall and then he grabbed her again and the only thing I remember is that it was, he looked so, his whole facial structure changed, everything about him changed. Let me stop you right there. Your Honor, we would object, that is non-responsive. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the witness's comments regarding facial structuring and change of expression is stricken from the record, and it was not in response to the question. You are to disregard that answer. Go ahead, counsel. Okay, did you see the defendant's face immediately after you told him that he took your sister for granted? Yes, I did. Okay, and what, if anything unusual, did you notice about his face at that time? At that time, he got very upset, and he started screaming. Okay, now, was his anger manifested in any other way other than the fact that he became, other than the fact that he became, began screaming? Yes, his whole facial structure changed. I mean, everything changed about him. Okay, when you say that his facial structure changed, what do you mean? Elaborate on that for us, please. It was quiet, calm, normal conversation like we were sitting here, like we are right now. And then all of a sudden, it turned into, the eyes got real angry, and it was his whole jaw, everything started, you know. His whole face just changed completely when he got upset, and it wasn't as if it was OJ anymore. He looked like a different person, and that is when Nicole, that's what Nicole had always said when he got angry. Let me stop you right there. Motion to strike as non-responsive, Your Honor. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you are to disregard the last portion of the answer. Comments as to what Nicole had said in the past about the defendant's behavior or facial structure. Miss Brown, sorry. If you would, would you please listen carefully to Mr. Darden's questions and defense counsel's question. Please answer as precisely as you can, and please don't volunteer any information, okay? Okay. Where did you go, and what did Mr. McCabe and your sister... What did you guys do after the defendant threw the three of you out of his house? We went to the Beverly Hills Hotel. Okay, and why did you go to the Beverly Hills Hotel? That is where he was staying, Ed McCabe. Were you staying there as well? We stayed there that night, yes. Ed McCabe was your boyfriend at the time? Yes, he was. And did you spend the night at the Beverly Hills Hotel that night? Yes, we did. Did your sister Nicole also spend the night with you that night? Yes, she did. Did she ever return to the house? She did the next morning. Did you try and stop her from returning to the house? Yes, I did. Yes, I told her. I told her that she shouldn't go back. She says, I'm not going back. I'm just going to go pick up a few things. Did she say if she would return back to the hotel? Yes, she did. Did she say she was going to come back to you? Yes, she did. Did she come back? No, she didn't. Did you report that incident to the police at the time? No, I didn't. Why didn't you? Did she? I don't think so. Did Ed McCabe report it to the police? Not to my knowledge, no. Did you consider reporting the incident to the police? I didn't. Why not? Because I told her. I just told her. I said, you know. Oh, we had talked later on. Yes, we talked about it later on. Okay, now go ahead. Do you have something else to say? Hold on. The question was, did you report it to the police? Did you consider reporting it to the police? The answer is yes or no. No. All right. Thank you, Mr. Darden. Why didn't you report it to the police? Because she said she would take care of it. And if you recall, what year was it that this incident occurred? Well, God, it was in the early 80s, 82, 83, maybe. Miss Brown, after your sister Nicole told you that she would handle it, why didn't you take it upon yourself to take further steps toward notifying the police? Objection. Overruled. Could you repeat that, please? Well, your sister told you that she would handle it, correct? Right. Did she handle it? I guess in her own way she did. Well, you told us that you expected her to return to the hotel, is that correct? Yes. Okay, well, when she didn't return to the hotel, did you, did you do anything toward finding out why she didn't return to the hotel? You know what? I really don't remember. I just told her to come back. Well, did you do anything toward finding out if she was okay? Oh, yes. We had talked later on. Yes. Let's take a recess. Be back at 1.30 p.m. Back on the record. Continue, counsel. Miss Brown, showing you what has been marked People's 10 for identification. Is that a photograph of your sister, Nicole? Yes, it is. Is that a photograph that you have seen before? Yes, it is. 
Do you know who took that photograph? I did. Do you recall when it was that you took the photograph? Yes, it was right after the 89 incident. Was it on New Year's Day itself? Yes, I think it was a couple of days later. That photograph depicts certain injuries to your sister, is that correct? Yes, it does. The swelling over her right eye, that isn't how she usually looked, is it? Oh no, it is not. Your Honor, may I show the jury People's 11 for identification? Yes, you may. Miss Brown, showing you People's 11 for identification. In this photograph, your sister has her arm raised. Is that correct? Yes. Do you see any injury to her right arm there? Yes, I do. What do you see? Well, I see a bruise, a big bruise. And directing your attention to the right side of her, of her head or forehead, do you see any injuries to the right side of her forehead? Yes, I do. That is not how she usually looked, is it? No, it is not. You told us a moment ago that you took these photographs, is that correct? Yes, I did. Okay, would you describe for us, please, the circumstances that led to your taking these photographs? Nicole asked me to take them for her. Miss Brown, are these the only two photographs that you took? Yes, they are. After you took those photographs, what did you do with them? I gave them back to Nicole and she took them. Okay, and did you know back in 1989 whether or not your sister Nicole had a safe deposit box at Union Bank? No, I was not aware of that. Okay, we're going to switch transcripts. to the testimony of the doctor. Okay, here we go. Dr. Drury, kindly resume the stand, please. Your Honor, may I approach the witness? Surely, go ahead. Dr. Drury, I'm showing you some of the defendant's exhibits marked A through I, which appear to be a photograph of the exterior and interior of the Johnson residence that were taken on December 6, 2012, at the hour of 3.30 a.m. Following the incident, the shooting. These pictures were taken right after the shooting. Now, Doctor, do these pictures sort of depict the type of destruction that was described to you by Mr. Johnson while you were examining him? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Now, after reviewing these pictures, could you state within, say, a reasonable medical certainty whether or not the destruction, in your opinion, was connected in any way with an acute alcoholic hallucinosis that Mr. Johnson was suffering at the time? I would say that they are connected in considering the whole body of evidence in my examination of Mr. Johnson. Doctor, could you, after viewing these pictures, form an opinion as to whether or not Mr. Johnson knew at the time this destruction took place, whether or not he could know or understand the nature of the acts that he was committing? Irrelevant, Your Honor. Your Honor, I think we are laying a foundation as to his mental state at the time that this destruction took place. The objection is overruled. I'll permit you to answer. Would you please restate the question? Could you reread the question, please? Well, it may be that he knew the nature of the act. However, he was acting under a delusional thinking process and based on this hallucinatory experience, so it was unrealistic at any rate. Can you tell us whether or not you formed any opinion of whether or not Mr. Johnson at that time understood the nature of his acts? I don't believe he did. It was my feeling that he felt that he was actually striking at the face of the devil. Now, Doctor, progressing forward, do you have an opinion as to whether or not Mr. Johnson knew or understood the nature of his act when he fired a rifle into a dwelling house? I would say that he was probably laboring under the same delusional thinking and probably did not understand it. It was an unprovoked, basically bizarre sort of thing to do, and I believe he still was functioning under his delusion and hallucinatory experience. Would your opinion change a little later on this evening as to the time when he was firing his rifle at the police officers? I felt that he was probably in the same mental state as when he committed these other acts. When you say probably, can you state within, say, a reasonable medical certainty whether or not he was under this mental delusion? I would say he was. Is that within reasonable medical certainty? Yes, I would say so. I have nothing further, Your Honor. Okay, cross-examination. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Doctor, you are basing your opinion on information that you have, have gathered from the defendant. Is that correct? Yes. You looked at the pictures that counsel has just supplied you, and those pictures tended to verify some of the information that you got from him? Yes. As to the house? Yes. And also, apparently, you had seen a police report which indicated to you that there had been some damage to the house? Yes. Therefore, you can verify that information the defendant has given to you? Yes, I feel so. Doctor, at the end of your examination, you wrote an opinion. You marked it under opinion on the last page of your report. Yes. Would you mind please reading your opinion to us in full? That would include the whole paragraph. Yes, the defendant has a long history of rather heavy, heavy intake of alcohol, resulting in a number of arrests. 
of incarceration and fines. His drinking has also been the source of a good deal of marital strife. On the day of the present offense, the defendant had not drunk anything until the evening, at which time he consumed a rather large amount of alcohol over a short period of time. Apparently, as a result of this, he suffered a delusion some experiences which frightened him extremely and he developed a delusional feeling that the devil was after his wife and children he ran home from the bar although he had a vehicle there and damaged his house and frightened his family in an effort to strike the devil he has no recall of the present offense in terms of getting his gun going to the neighbor's home shooting the gun or shooting the at the police officers he only remembers his apprehension after the incident occurred and events following that it is my opinion that the defendant was not the same at the time of the offense apparently suffering from an acute alcoholic hallucinosis and that he did not know the nature and quality of his act or the act and the facts that it was wrong doctor when you wrote that opinion you had put in the proceeding in the preceding sentence that the defendant had no recall of the present offense in the terms of one getting his gun that was based on the information given to you by the defendant by the defendant that is correct Okay, that concludes our Q&A practice for the 225 class. Have a great day.